Hey guys, what's going on? This is always back with another video of Java Central Training Series. So in this video, we will talk about recursion in Java. So recursion in Java is a process in which a method calls itself continuously. A method in Java that calls itself is called a recursive method. It makes some code compact but complex to understand. So the syntax for uh, creating a uh, recursion in Java is basically a return type and a uh, method name and then you call the method again all right so let me give you a quick example so that's like infinite times recursion in java so we have a main class here i'm going to create another class so right click here java class and i'll name it let's say recursion okay click okay all right so we have the class here and i'm going to create a method in this class so let's say static wide I'll call it, let's say, A. Add a code block. All right, so in the code block, simple, I'll type hello, okay? And then I will call that method down here. Okay, so now I've called that method inside its own method. So that's basically called a recursion. If you hover over here, uh, cursor, so that it's telling you that it's a recursive call, okay? So that's uh, basically a recursion. So let's go back to our main class now. And in the main class, uh, if I call that method now, so let's say a method. So it's telling me that dot com dot sample, I need to import that. So I will press alt enter. So it will do that for me. So now if I run the program, it's gonna keep calling that method. Okay, it's a infinity. So it's gonna give me an error at the end. So it's a recursion, all error. So now uh, we've seen that. So we, we can see that now uh, infinite recursion, it's happening. So let's have a look at the example of finiting times, okay? So what I do, I'll go back to my, I'm just gonna get rid of this and let's go back to recursion.java here. Let's get rid of this as well. So in a static method, right, uh, I will, increment that so let's go and declare a variable first so i'll declare a static variable int okay and i'll name it just count is equal to zero okay and then let's go into the method now so in the method i'm going to say count i'm going to increment that plus plus okay and then i will say uh if count less than equal to let's say 10 okay and then what it should do come down here and then say print out hello and let's say uh, plus is a concatenation operator and then print count okay and then let's call the method itself so let's get out from the if statement and then let's say a okay so that's a recursive now so now I'm, tell, I'm telling this matter that just keep counting, keep incrementing until it reaches 10, okay? So let's go to the main class now. Here we will simply call that matter now. So A, done. And then let's run the program now. It's going to, so hello, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten. So there may be a question in your mind that why use Java recursion? There are certain problems that just make sense to solve via Java recursion. This is the case because sometimes when solving problem recursively, you can really cut down on code with your solution. So for example, let's take a look at something called Fibonacci sequence. All right, here's the example. Let me write that in, in comments here. So what is it? So 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, and so on. Okay, so if you don't know about this uh, sequence, let me explain to you. So the third number of the sum of number one and two, which is going to be zero plus one, it's going to be one. And then one plus one is equal to two, which is here. So two plus one, three, which is here. And then three plus two, five, which is here. And five plus three is eight here. So that's called a uh, Fibonacci sequence. Okay, so we have uh we know what is uh, uh fabonaki sequences now here's a big question how do you solve this problem with recursion in java 
There are really only two things any recursion code needs to ensure that it will work properly. A defined ending point, a constant progression towards the ending point. So as long as you abide by these two rules, you will be okay. If you fail to abide them, you might get caught in an infinite loop, what I've just shown you before, and you might have to terminate your program manually. Well, what's the defined ending point for our Fabriconi sequence? Okay, I keep calling it Fabriconi, but it is Fibonacci sequence. Okay, well, it will come in the form of the problem you wish to solve. The question would be something like this. What is the 40th number of Fibonacci sequence? So there you have it, that 40th number in the ending point of our sequence, okay? So, okay, so what's our constant progression towards that point? It will be that we'll need to iterate through our recursion 40 times one by one. There's a measurable way of ensuring that we are moving towards the ultimate goal right. Now, with this in mind, let's think about what the code would look like. The first thing we need to do is think of how Fibonacci sequence can be represented in terms of an equation. So I'm going to write that in a comments here. So let's say f n is equal to f, I'll use the capital F, n minus one, okay? And then plus, f and minus 2 okay so that's the equation of Fibonacci sequence so now we know what is a Fibonacci sequence as an equation which makes sense right so the n in the case represent the index of any particular number in a sequence now obviously we can't just plug it in the value of 40 for n and know what the answer is because we need to start back at the beginning and work our way up to end to figure it out so since we need to work our way from beginning of the equation then that means we'll likely need to start there with our coding so your code will start like this so i'm going to start writing a code now so we have our main class and a main method so in the main method let's uh add some variables okay so int n1 is equal to 0 int n2 is equal to 1 okay and then let's print it out so I'll say n1 minus add quotation so add a concatenation plus n1 okay and then use our Fibonacci, I keep saying it's Fibonacci, but it's Fibonacci sequence, C Q U E N C E, and then let's say N1 and 2. Okay, don't worry, it's uh, an error because we haven't declared a Fibonacci sequence method yet, so I'll show you in a second. Okay, so let's get out of our main method now. Here we'll use, uh, we'll start another method, so public static void and Fibonacci sequence all right so here we say n int1 n1 int n2 okay let's go down now and then we'll system out uh, let's say in the bar in the quotation n2 let's get out of the quotation and then say plus n2 okay just forgot to type minus here so that's been really pretty good at start but there is no recursion going on here remember we need to call the Fabriconi sequence method inside of itself to start a java recursion the only problem is if we do this now it will run forever remember two rules first we need to uh, clear progression towards endpoint and two we need an endpoint so on the top here okay so i'm going to declare a private static int index sorry int index is equal to zero so we have a starting point which is index zero and then ending point should be int let's say starting point i will call it stop 
stopping point is equal to 40 okay All right so we have two uh, variables now starting and ending point okay so now we have established the starting point and ending point but not the recursion so let's put that as well okay so all right, so I'm going to add recursion to our code and I will finish the program and once it's done, I will explain to you guys, all right? So Hi guys, so our program is finished. Uh, I'm going to explain that quickly. So we have our main class we have two variables index starting point which is 0 and stopping point which is 40 we have a main method I've declared two variables here n1 and n2 the first statement I'm printing out is index index I think I should run the program and it, that would be easy for you guys to understand what's going on here All right so we have index 0 0 which is this statement because right now index is 0 and n1 is 0 as well and then we use the Fabriconi Fibonacci sequence n1 and n2 which has the parameters here okay but the main thing to understand here is basically this method we're printing out index index n2 okay so that's this statement so n2 1 and index 0 right now index is 0 so if index is equal to stopping point then should break the program should return okay otherwise increment the index so it's keep getting incremented here as you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 here and then we use the Fabriconi Fibonacci sequence here okay so I'm saying that n2 okay comma the second parameter is going to be n1 plus n2 okay so we're getting one value to add it to next so that's a Fibonacci sequence so 2 2 plus 3 5 5 plus 8 13 and then so on okay so the main thing to notice here that this is the method Fibonacci sequence and I'm calling the same method inside its own method. So that's the recursion guys. And um, if you still have any questions about it, let me know in the comments below. You can follow me on Twitter at awaysmiller01. Thanks for watching again and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys in the next video. Cheers.